Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take our first look at Dynamics 365. So depending upon you know who you are and different things, um, effective November 1st, Dynamics 365 was released in trial capabilities. It's not necessarily out from a production standpoint, but if you're a new or existing customer, you can actually download and do trials of the new functionality of the information ahead of time and see kind of what's out there. And so what I was able to do is work with some different instances and kind of play through. And I thought I'd show you just some of the initial things that jumped out at me in regards to some of the new navigational elements, some of the business process flows, some of the editable grids, and just kind of overall navigation information. Uh, as we delve through, we'll get into more of the detailed stuff such as business process flows and some of that information in a little bit more detail as we move through future videos. But we thought it'd be a nice opportunity to go ahead and get started and let you take kind of your first look into Dynamics 365. So one of the first things that was reduced are if so one of the first things that was introduced as part of the unified experience with Dynamics 365 is your home screen. So ultimately as more items become available, you know, operations modules, financials modules, field service, project service, and then any of the apps that you've downloaded from AppSource or that you have gone in and subscribed to as part of AppSource will show up in here. So here you can see that I have initially set up some trials of sales customer service, and then I have my Dynamics 365 custom environment, which realistically just looks more like a traditional Dynamics CRM environment without the customizations having been made from a navigation element. So if I come into here and I click on sales, that's going to open up my quote unquote sales app. Now from, an, uh, from a functionality perspective, the sales app is the dynamic CRM or traditional dynamic CRM or now 365 functionality. So you're not seeing anything necessarily different from that perspective. However, what's happened inside the navigation is the navigation has been optimized for a sales experience. So I'm going to see things more like sales and marketing and settings. And then as I go into each one of these individual areas, the items that you're going to see in here will be have already have been kind of customized or streamlined to reflect the specific business use case that I wanted to work with. Same thing if I were to come over in here and switch on my option for customer service. And if I click on customer service, now this is going to bring me into my customer service module, which if you've worked with dynamic CRM in the past is the service module of the application, but the navigation has been streamlined from an areas and sub area standpoint to be more targeted specifically at that option. And even like when you go into settings, you'll see that it's been streamlined a little bit to work through these, the, the service related specific information. Now you'll notice over on the side that I still have interactive service hub. That's still a viable option that I can go into from within Dynamics 365. I also have this option called my apps. And so this is the area that as custom apps are being created for your organization or by you, you will be able to access and work with your apps directly from in here. Now, from a time perspective, we're not going to spend a ton of time going through that today, but it's important to note that that is something that you do have available when you're as you're moving forward. Now, let's just go back into here and this time let's go into 365 custom. This is realistically going to be more in line with what you would normally have seen in the past, where there isn't the navigation isn't customized or tailored to a specific subset of functionality. It's more or less just everything that you have within the environment. And that was because when I chose to do my trial environment, I chose to do sales and service and have everything put in here so I can see more of the traditional experience. But again, based upon how you've done your licensing and what you've purchased, whether you've got additional add-ons or whatnot, that'll navigate through and, and streamline that information accordingly. Now, let's first talk about one of the key changes that people have been pretty excited about, and that's the concept of, of editable grids. So editable grids are an option. However, one of the things I would tell you is they're not enabled by default. So if you go into, so for example, if I go into accounts, I can see actually in here that I do have editable grids. I can click on any one of these options. I could make changes and make inline edits was part of the application. If I come up here and I click on, for example, contacts, 
contacts I have not enabled for editable grids. So I'm going to have my more traditional out-of-the-box static grid functionality. So it is something that you do have to enable, and it can be enabled at an entity level, or it can be enabled at kind of a subgrid level. So it's, it's actually done through controls. Now let me just show you what that looks like at kind of a high level so you can see it at an entity level. So if I just go in, I'm logged in as an administrator, so obviously I have customization capabilities. So I'll come into here and I'll go in to customize the entity. And give this just a second to load up. And so then as it's coming in here, this is using those control functionality, which in the past with Dynamics CRM, we, when we start, started talking about controls, we really only had controls available to us from you know, a mobile and a tablet perspective and said, okay, this is what I wanted to see on the mobile or tablet application. I now have that same functionality available to me on a application perspective. So now I can come into here for whatever specific entity I want to work with. So in this case, I'm on the account entity. Actually, let's just switch this to the contact entity so you can see this across the board. So I'll go into the contact entity and I'll click on controls. And then I'll add the editable grid control option. And then once I add the editable grid control option, then I'll define where I want to use it. So do I want to work with it at the web client level? Do I want to work with it on phones only? Do I want to work with it on tablet options? What are the options that I want to go through? And then I can also see down here how I want to do things about like grouping. Do I want to do lookup information associated with that? What specific items do I want to have in regards to those options? And then again, as we're working through it, just like any types of scenarios, I could do you know JavaScripting and stuff. But for right now, we'll just let's go ahead and do enable edit grids and we'll just do it at a web level. So I'll save and publish. So now that I've published, now I can see that when I go back into contacts, I have editable grids. Now, one of the options that we saw within there was the ability to group this information. So when I come into here, I could choose different grouping options based upon different categories. So in this case, I could group it by full name. And these are really just associated with the columns that are in the view itself. And so I can group it by name, I can group it by company name, I, you know, if this was accounts, I could group by city, any of the fields that really are available to you within there. I could now come into any one of these individual options. I can click on it. I can give it, uh, make any changes that I would want to do here. I can now hit save. And that'll commit the changes and update the information inside the application. So this is, again, a, one of that really new exciting feature that people have been looking at. Just remember that it's not enabled out of the box. You do have to go in at an entity level and then enable it. And then the other thing that you can do, too, and we'll talk about this maybe in another video as well, is when you go into form customizations and you add subgrids, you can do the same concept on subgrids as well. So if you want to have editable grids when you're using your subgrids, you can work with those. Now, the other option that you have is let's go ahead and go into opportunities and let's just open up an opportunity. Another exciting change that people have talked about is the new updated editors for business process flows and business rules. And we'll actually do those in the next video so you can see exactly what that process as far as what the new editor looks like and some of the new functionality that are around it. But there's some pretty cool stuff that you can now do with business process flows. One of the biggest things that you'll see here is as you're in a specific stage, it'll tell you how long that stage has been active. So you can actually see also as you're working through it how long the sales process has been, or the business process flow has been active. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility inside the application to see exactly what's going forward as you're going through these. The other thing that's kind of neat now is you have the ability to execute workflows upon stage entry and stage exit as part of your business process flows, as well as being able to execute business process flows through workflows. Workflows. There's also an entirely new structure around being able to abandon the, uh, business process flows and run concurrent business process flows to have different business, uh, multiple business process flows associated with the same record if need be. So they've modified that entire process in regards to how you can work through those. And again, we'll get through those as we go into additional videos. Now, in regards to that, most of what you're seeing is around user experience definition, but those are some of the key big changes that I've seen right off the bat and just wanted to take an opportunity to show you that. In future videos, like I said, we'll go ahead and we'll delve into each one of these options in a little bit more detail. 
So that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed our first look into Dynamics 365. Again, we've got lots more detailed information we want to do in subsequent videos, but I thought this would be at least a nice opportunity to really focus on some of the navigational differences so you could see what that looks like, as well as a couple of the key components around editable grids and, and items that people are looking at. So that's going to do it for today. For all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.